Hi, everyone. My name is Bill. Um, I've been getting a few questions on this laser enclosure that I put together. So I thought I'd go through uh, my process and kind of give you some dimensions. And hopefully there's some information in here you might be able to use. Uh, please bear in mind, I'm not a carpenter, obviously not a woodworker. So this is kind of just cobbled together in my basement. But if it helps, um, then great. So uh, here we go. All right. Since I stated before, I'm definitely not a uh, a woodworker. I started, uh, I kind of cheated and I started with a 48 inch long by 24 inch piece of three quarter inch plywood. Uh, you can get those pre cut from most of your nicely finished for most of your uh, big box stores like Home Depot or Lowe's if you're here in the States. Um, and from there, um, I added three and a half inch wide pieces of wood around the outside and I left a little bit of a one inch or three quarter inch lip on the top. So just screws around the outside uh, because the original iteration of this, I just had two by two legs on there sitting about 15 inches, 20 inches off the floor uh, for the kids to put their Legos in and, and play. And so as soon as they, uh, as soon as they got bored with the Legos, uh, this ended up getting longer legs, a stringer around the outside to stiffen it up with two by fours uh, for a guinea pig table. So the cage would sit on top and it was, uh, you know, 30 inches, 32 inches above from the top of the work plane to the uh, ground there. Um, as soon as the guinea pigs went away, I turned it into an airbrush uh, paint booth. So from there, I added sides and a top and the top is where the exhaust fan would go. So as you can see, the sides and the back sit within that little lip that I created for the Legos. So if from this edge to this edge would be 24 inches and I had some pre-cut plywood, rough plywood that was from underneath here to the top of the workbench at 16 inches, uh, 40 inch, uh, and the backside sat in between there. So the top would be 16 inches from this front edge to the back edge and 48 inches from one end to the other. And then I put a little angle on there. This is about six and a quarter inches from the top of the workbench to where this angle comes at. I'm not sure exactly what that angle is. And that would be for the, uh, the laser enclosure door. And then once I did get the laser, um, I wanted to be able to use this booth for airbrushing and for, for laser and have some safety. So I decided to fully enclose it. But I realized that it was a little bit too deep in the y-axis. So... I had to cut a, a relief in the backside, so I ended up just cutting a hole in the backside and adding basically a box on the rear of the enclosure. And if I went to a, uh, a section view, you can kind of see, see kind of how that looks there. So that gave me an additional three and a half inches there for the, uh, the motor uh, on the laser and the, and the cables just for a little bit of safety there. So it sits in there real nice. Um, I did raise it up about an inch and a quarter off of the table and I can show you those 3D printed feet I created for it. Um, so yeah, it, it's an evolution. And if I were to do it all over again, I wouldn't have started obviously with 24 by 48. I would have started with 48 inches by maybe 27 or 28 inches deep. That way it would negate the need for this, this extra box back here. But like I said, it didn't originally start out as a laser enclosure, but uh, but here we are. All right, so now that the uh, box is on there, and then the last step was just adding the the hinge lid, just a couple of cheap door hinges uh, about six inches in from each other, five or six inches each from the end, and then I cut a window. Uh, the laser protective... Um, acrylic that I have is 24 inches by 12 inches. So all I did was leave an inch all around. So this is a 22 by 10 inches window, put a little handle in there. And then this gap was filled by that heavy duty vinyl. Um, just again, for if you're here in the States, I got that from Joanne Fabrics. And then I put a strip of that vinyl over the hinges to close up this gap here. So there's no uh, danger of light leaking out of there. And I'll show you more when we get to the, uh, the video. So here's where I'm at so far. You can see the vinyl that uh, kind of lays down as I lift it uh, with a piece of uh, molding on the bottom for a little bit of weight. Got a cheap webcam in there, some LED lighting, uh, and then you can kind of see the recess there in the backside. That's a set of laser height setting gauges I made up. Uh, those will be on Thingiverse as well. And then you can see the recess in the back side of the box where I had to add a little bit more room for the, uh, the motor there and the, um, the X-axis motor and the cables 
I did make up some riser blocks to give me about an inch and a quarter more clearance from the base plate there. And I can also have it screwed into the front lip there. So I'll, I can have those added to Thingiverse as well if, if you could use anything like that. So here's some pics with dimensions. That's the inside of the enclosure. This is the clearance cavity in the back of the enclosure. I got a couple pictures here showing the how the vinyl is laid out just with a heavy stapler. And this is the one with the molding at the bottom for the front of the, uh, the box. There's some clips for the enclosure acrylic. Um, I'll have that on Thingiverse as well. This is uh, information on the the filter fan, which I pulled off of this airbrush assembly I got off of Amazon. And this is a picture of the cutout in the bottom. I decided to put together my own air assist and using what I had laying around. And I 3D printed this mount, which I wanted to fit close to the body of the laser to reduce the chances of it hitting the frame. And then I ran a 3 16 hose uh, through the wall of the enclosure to my airbrush pump. So this is what I've got going for the design for the air assist. I did a three-dimensional mount, uh, which I wanted to fit really close, like I said, to prevent from hitting the sides. And then I didn't really want a 3D printed mount for it, but I did have a long air hose needle that uh, worked into that eighth inch fitting. Uh, that I could press onto the hose, and so all I really needed was a simple bore for that needle to fit into, and there's enough uh, friction there that the back pressure doesn't push it out at all. And so this runs down through the side, and this is hollow in here, and I have a set of four um, one millimeter ports, which kind of impinge and come to an intersection about 20 millimeters in front of a uh, below this area here so if i turn uh if i make this transparent you can kind of see what i did there and then this one as well so you can see the hole that the needle fits through there's a little shoulder to stop it and it feeds down into this clear section so there's a hole that goes to this arm and then it feeds to this circular ring and then it has four one millimeter ports that uh blast all the air to an intersection point uh, to a certain distance down here. And it seems to work pretty well in the, the limited amount of testing I've done so far. So I'll probably have this uh, on Fingerverse as well. And all the components, other components for the, um, the air assist, I'll put uh, links down in the description as well for, for all the materials for this, for this project. So if this helps you, that, that's great. Uh, um, and definitely give me feedback on it. So here's it mounted to the laser. Um, I use the four screws that go right into the laser body. Um, it's printed out of PLA plus, nothing uh, spectacular as far as material. And here you can see the four impinging holes that uh, fit around the laser itself. In case you're wondering how I routed the exhaust, I've got some forage ducting coming from the fan. Uh, we have these 3D printed plastic shutters, which takes that 4-inch line into my 6-inch line. We've got a couple more shutters over here, um, again, 3D printed uh, in case I need to pull air out of this side of the basement so I can kind of route it, route the exhaust how I want it. So with that 4-inch fan, it pulls, it pushes it into the six inch line, but I've also got a six inch inline fan, which moves a lot more air and it kind of provides suction and helps that four inch fan on that side. So here's what the uh, controller, which is a remote controller mounted onto the wall. And then this is how the six inch line uh, exit the basement. And uh, here's what the exhaust looks like uh, from the outside of the house. All right, so that's about it for me. Again, this is not a tutorial at all. It's just kind of showing you how I uh, how I went about and did it with the materials I had on hand. I've got a lot of help from all of you out there over the years on my many projects, so hopefully this will maybe help somebody else down the line. So if you have any questions, let me know. But uh, I really appreciate it, and thanks for watching.